Hi, this is Derek with 100 Interviews. We're back here at South by Southwest, and we have the lovely opportunity to speak with Krisha Pruitt, better known as Geek Mommy. Geek Mommy. How are you today? I am fabulous. I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I have no voice, but I am fabulous. Well, we're glad that you took a few seconds out of your busy, busy schedule to sit down with us for just a quick second. Well, thank you. Um, so what are you up to nowadays? Um, well, this particular conference at South by Southwest, I am very fortunate because I'm partially here with the Walmart 11 Moms, which I've been a member of since last July. But um, the sponsors that I'm here with are Colgate Palmolive, who as a huge supplier and distributor are entering social media for the first time and they are ready to embrace it and to use it as, as somebody that produces items which, you know, it's kind of a new edge, they're non-tech. And they're loving it. And I get to take them around and show them something. It's kind of like this new experience. And you gave us the opportunity to speak with Walmart uh, earlier, I and I was really interested in, in how they're utilizing uh, this whole network and how they're really trying to embrace how they're approaching their customer. Um, have you had any influence on that as to how they're approaching it? Um, to a point, we get to do a lot of feedback on it. Um, for me, since I'm more of a social media tech person than I am a money saving person, and I know I've learned so much from the moms that are like the money-saving personal finance frugal coupon bloggers. I, I'm doing much better financially, thank you. But for me, I do social media and I do tech and I am a mom. And I've been lucky enough to sort of go along with Walmart on the ride while they're getting into social media and watch as it evolves and watch as they're doing it right and they're doing it transparently and they're leading the way. Right. Have you been surprised on how supportive they have been of social media? Because I, I yeah. would think of that a company that size would, would be a little scared, maybe a little bit. Oh, it's done. You know, we, we went out to uh, Bentonville in October, and originally it was just sort of a come in, see the company, see our corporate culture, see what we do and why we really believe what we do. And the day before we got there, Josh Burnoff, who was a, a senior analyst at, at Forrester, had been there giving them groundswell training. And so we came in, and as we were there, progressively more and more executives started showing up to meet with the mom bloggers. And we ended up with, like, you know, I'm the VP of marketing, Tony was there. I wish I could tell you Tony's last name, I'm kind of sketchy that. Um, the head buyer for all of the groceries, the head buyer for all of the non-groceries. Uh, the CMO, Eduardo Castro Wright, who is now currently the CEO of the United States, was then the President of the United States, coming in, talking with us, and they were all embracing it. And that's a little unusual because usually the sea levels don't, <laughs> social media don't get it. And what had happened was the day before, you know, um, and I, I love this story because Josh had gone in and he was prepared to deal with the, the attorney level and the sea levels and everything. Well, I'm not sure we're going to do this. But they all read the book and they were ready to go. <laughs> and he started in his normal spiel and they went, no, no, we're ready to go. And they did. They just they embraced it. They went forward with it. They have been incredibly reactive to it, incredibly responsive to it. And it's something I found, I, I found stunning. Because you don't see something on a company that Walmart is the world's largest retailer, and they're the second largest employer in the United States, second only to the federal government, more than the postal service. So you wouldn't expect them to move fast, but they are. They're reacting. They're embracing it. They're going forward with it, and they're succeeding in it on a level that they didn't. You know, I, I didn't expect. So well, going back to uh, that that kind of point with you know with your involvement with Blogger and the Mommy Network. Mm -hmm. um, are you surprised on how much influence that you are having within that sector, or is it just that it's a trust issue? You know what? Um, the reason that, that social media marketing is becoming part of everybody's tool set is because you can advertise all you want, and there's always that, well, I don't know, maybe I could try it. But if a good friend tells you something, you're ten times more likely to go out and buy something. So if I say to you, oh my god, I just had the best pie ever, and it's made by Company X, you're more likely the next time you're out buying pie to go with Company X. Versus if you see a commercial or an ad or something that says, oh, Company X, you say, yeah, they make pie, I get it. Right. So the mom network and the mom bloggers and blog her, and not even just the moms, but the women in general, they talk about that. And they used to talk about that in the neighborhood. They used to talk about that at the back fence with all the other moms and all the women that were home and all the women that were baking and all the mommy moms and it was sort of a gossip thing. Now we are not geographically tied to that. We talk to our communities, our communities are everywhere. They're in the United States, they're in Canada, they're in Europe, they're on every time zone, they walk, they work, they don't work, they stay home, they are entrepreneurs, but we still do the same thing we used to do, which is we talk. 
And so that's companies have to respond to their own choice. Well, I was at Blog World uh, last year, and they were talking about kind of paper post in uh, regards to the Mommy Network. And, and what are your feelings on that? Because oh, that's a good question because, you know, I actually have worked with Isaiah, and paper post was kind of the idea of Ted Murphy, who is the CEO of Idea. And somehow that, you know, that, that blew up into a drama that I'm not going to come back over. I never really knows it. But one of the things that, that I find is I hear that, well, this is an amateur. We don't get paid. And I say, seriously, there are certain things that if you went to your web guy and said, I want you to set up a contest. You need to set up the site, write the content, have people enter the contest, control all the entries, make sure they're all valid, and later on, make sure that you do, do announce it and deliver the contest. Oh, but we're not going to pay you this week because that might influence the contest. Uh, it, I mean, you know what he'd say to you. Yes. But the concept, well, we'll just go to a mom block and we'll say, hey, why don't you run this contest because we're company X and want you to give away things like a camera or a TV or a you know, piece of clothing or some cereal. And we want you to do all the contests. We want you to set everything up. You do the own way with the guy, do the development, do the content, put it out there. Oh, but we're not going to pay you because we know that you wouldn't like that. And that's not transparent and that might be influence. Say, so, seriously, I didn't, you didn't ask for my opinion on that one. You asked me to do work and I'm a professional. And I have my own audience and I have my own readers and I'm a publisher. So yeah, I'm totally supportive of sponsored or paid for posting in regard to specific types of posting. Now, obviously, there is a trust issue. If you're saying, oh my god, I'm reviewing this thing, and they're a great company, oh, and by the way, they're paying me to do that, your audience is going to have to decide whether they trust you, whether you're viable or not. I mean, there's an old joke about a guy that walks up to a woman and says, would you sleep with me? And she says, no. So can't you sleep with me for $10 million? Well, maybe. Yeah, I guess so. So just now that we know what kind of person you are, let's talk price. And either you can be bad or you can't be bad. Exactly. But as a professional saying, well, you know, journalists get paid and, and web guys get paid and publishers get paid. But no, I think I'm purist. I think I'm, I'm just going to sit here and do it for free out of the goodness of my heart. Uh-uh. Okay. So no, I, I am. Paper price is, is not, it wasn't transparent. I see it's transparent. So. Good deal. Well, uh, we really appreciate your time here, but we want to. I'm sorry, uh, I kept going, we, huh? We want to. We want to finish up with uh, maybe a funny story. You have a lot of uh, influence, and you, you meet a lot of different personalities and people. Mm -hmm. And I know you have to have some good stories in there that you could uh, share with our audience. You know, <laughs> it's, it's kind of tough to choose those because yes, I do, and they're not all shareable. But um, the thing that that, I, that always cracks me up the most about these conferences is I go there, and I'm sort of in my little Clark Kent identity, and my my neighbor all says Lucretia Pruitt, and has a little picture. And, I'll talk to people and I can talk to them for long periods of time, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> and um, it started with Vlogger last year when I was there out there in July. And there were a lot of people that I connect with on Twitter, but for whatever reason, unless you're standing like 30 feet away and doing this and doing the right pose, nobody knows who you are. So um, I'd be out there, I'd be sitting talking to women. And, you know, we talked for a while and they weren't really kind of, they, worked, they were on Twitter, but they didn't really get that it was part of their connection. So let's say, so, sorry, on Twitter? Say, yeah, well, who are you? Geek mommy. And they would shriek and, like, dive at me and hug me <laughs> and go off of things. And it was kind of like this little moment of, um, hi, I was the same person I was 10 minutes ago when we were just talking about normal stuff. But now you're famous. Well, it's, yeah, inter <laughs> and Twitter famous, which yes. is kind of like um, about as good as, you know, that and 250 buy a cup of coffee. But, it, you know, if I bought my own press, I would totally be like, oh my God, it's so amazing. But it's just kind of like, hey. <laughs> And, and you would be who on Twitter, because I'm probably following you right back. So <laughs> That's great. Well, Lucretia, we, we enjoyed uh, this little interview. Thank I'm glad you for you, giving uh, me a chance. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we were glad that you put your uh, name on our comments so we could actually get you in here. Uh, you know what? I saw what you guys were doing. I was so excited. I'm like, oh, that sounds like so much better look, and they're going to do something. So, yeah, thank you very much. Back for to the really Enjoy your, uh, the rest of your South by. All thank right? you. Thanks.